I've been praying for a while, as I said again, about this <clears throat> series that we're doing. And um, if you are thinking, are, uh, Mark just asked me, are we doing a new series? And my answer is no. <laughs> this is the same series uh, of that we have been doing. Uh, it was titled An Effective Witness. Um, but, you know, one of the uh, things that I was able to, um, that the Lord was able to help me with and during my time off last week was just spend time with him and talk to him and, and, and for him to help me develop this series more, um, which, which is making series is actually something. Oh, appreciate it, brother. Thank you. Uh, developing series is still something that I'm actually relatively new at. I've only done a couple uh, in my preaching history, um, and I believe the Lord has really helped to really develop this. And so, uh, turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter number 4. So, the series is, is, is now titled, uh, Fishers of Men, right? And, and that's what Jesus told his disciples. And it, so, it's titled, Fishers of Men. And that's what we, got Christ, has, wants us to be. And you can say that the subtitle is an effective witness, right? The title used to be an effective witness. That is still the goal, Right? But really, this will help us to kind of formulate it in our minds, right? And we're gonna, I'm going to break that down here in just a moment. But Matthew chapter 4 uh, in your Bibles, I thought I was turned there, but let me turn there real quick. Matthew chapter 4 in your Bibles, let's just uh, read that real quick. Uh, we're going to begin at verse number 17. <clears throat> so at this point... Uh, Jesus has uh, recently, more recently, started his earthly ministry. And he is about to call uh, Peter and, and Andrew to follow him. And l l let's just read here uh, in Matthew chapter 4, uh, starting in verse 17. The Bible says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus, walking by, the Sea of Galilee saw two brethren, right? Uh, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting, net, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. So uh, right away we see Jesus. He's walking by, and he sees uh, Andrew, and he sees Peter. And we know that Andrew and Peter, they were fishermen, right? They were brothers, and what they did for a living is that the, they were fishermen. So Fishermen would <laughs> catch fish, obviously. And then he would call them in verse 19. He would call them out of that life into a new life. In verse 19 he said, And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And I believe Jesus used this language for a specific reason. And so Jesus had just called them out of, hey, you're no longer going to be fishermen, but now you're going to be fishers of men. Now you are going to catch men. Now you're going to lead men to Jesus Christ. And so that they would go from their old vocation, their old job, to their new vocation, their new identity, is to follow Christ, and then he will transform you into what he wants you to be. And notice what Jesus does when I was talking about this, uh, the wording that he was using uh, is what any good teacher does is a, a good teacher will take something that somebody already understands and apply it to teach them something new. What did, what did, what did Peter uh, and Andrew understand? Well, they understood fishing, all right? <laughs> they did it for a living. Right, they 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 would catch fish. They would uh, uh, they they would catch fish, and they would uh, they done that for a while, and they understood fish. They understood where to find them. They understood what it took, what equipment to use, where they were. They they understood fishing, right? And Jesus would take that understanding, and he would apply it to something new that he would begin to teach them. And so here's the model. Here's the model that Jesus says, "Hey, follow me." Learn of me. Watch me. See what I do and copy it. And here's what he says. And I will make you fishers of men. 
right? So understand this, a, a, a crucial part of following Jesus Christ is that we will win souls to Jesus Christ. It, I mean, it is, it is part of our sanctification. It is part of our growth process. Uh, and, and let me just put it like this. You are not truly growing the way that Jesus wants you to grow, and you're not truly fulfilling your, your sanctification in him if you aren't witnessing to people and if you aren't winning souls to Jesus Christ and if you're not, if you're not growing in, in your ability to share the gospel and your ability to, to lead people to Jesus, if you're not growing and moving towards that direction, then you're kind of missing the mark. You're kind of missing what Jesus is really all about. He, he told them, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men, right? It, it is learn of me, watch me, do what I do, and Andrew and Peter would watch him, and they would learn how to win souls to Christ. And again, that's a key part of being a disciple of Jesus Christ. And understand that, that winning souls and being an effective witness, being a fisher of men, is a key part of our, is, is really our mission as believers. I mean, he summarized it right there. Follow me, we follow him, we obey him, we learn from him, right? And we become fishers of men, right? It's very simple. It's, 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 it's what he told uh, Peter and Andrew. And so it's part of our sanctification, and we ought to continue to grow. And so during this series, um, kind of the reason why I, I, I broke it down in this way is we're going to break it down really into four steps, maybe three. I'm still working on it. But uh, uh, let me put this out to you is, is that we're going to go fishing. All right, in this series. All right, but we're going to pretend like we're fishermen, uh, and that's how we're going to break this down. So uh, if you think about fishermen, again, Jesus took something they understood and applied it to something that they needed to learn. So in order to be a successful fisherman, what do you think is probably the first step that you need to do? Can anybody have any, any guesses, anything at all? So in order to be a successful fisherman, what is the first thing a, pro a fisherman needs, needs to do or, or get? Or any ideas? I'm, I'm hearing a couple of things. What? what? Get a boat. All right. A fisherman's got to have a boat. But before that, preparation. All right. We're going to talk about that. That's not quite step number one. So if we're going to go fishing, what should we probably know? How to fish and bait. Yes. We, we, you guys are good. We're, we're getting to. We're gonna get to those things. Let, let me put it like this: Where to fish? Thank you. Where are we gonna fish? Because we can have a boat. We can have the equipment. We can have the training. But where are we gonna go fish? Right? We, we have to go where the fish are. Right? We gotta go where the fish are. A fisherman would know the fishing spots. Right? A fisherman will not just simply go to a random lake. And, and just wait and hope that there's fish. No, known fishermen would know where to go, would know where the fish are, right? And that doesn't mean they're going to be super successful necessarily, but it's not just a, a, sort, of, a sort of go and just let, let's, let's hope it works, right? No, no, they need to go where the fish are, right? As Christians, right, step one, and, and really the first one we've already covered, and, and so that's, that's how I love about the Lord led me in this, is that we need to go where the people are, right? We need to go where the people are. And part of that, my first sermon was seeing our mission field, right? We have to see the mission field that is before us and see the opportunities that were there and, and take advantage of those opportunities, right? That was sermon number one. It's look up. Jesus looked up and saw the harvest, right? The fishermen know where the fish are, and they go towards uh, where the fish are, right? So go where the fish are is step number one. And we, saw, we talked about seeing our mission field. That was sermon number one. And sermon number two, uh, the last sermon was, you know, don't miss the opportunities that God will put in front of you. Right? Because we will purposely go where the fish are, right? We will go and, and seek out people that need Jesus Christ. Right? We will go uh, whether it's door to door. We will do a, a, a sort of uh, outreach push where we will have... A, a sort of special, um, I can't think of the word right now, um, 
some sort of outreach ministry where we go, go and, let's say, go minister to the sick or minister to the homeless, right? We will go where the fish are, right? Maybe it's going to work and there's, I mean, you don't have to look hard just to find lost people, okay? But we also talked about how God will present opportunities in front of you and you ought not to miss it in your day to day. Uh, maybe when, I, when you're walking out of church and you see two people standing there in the rain and, and you just, the Lord tells you, hey, just go talk to them. Right? My point is, is that God will put opportunities in front of you and we ought not to miss them. Right? And we talked about that with the great, uh, not the great, with, with the Good Samaritan, right? How, how, how God, how there was somebody along the Good Samaritan's path and he helped them. Right? And God will always give us uh, those opportunities. So we go where the fish are and we could also say we take the fish when they come. All right? We take the fish when they come. And we're going to go over uh, the next ones where, where we got to use the right, somebody said the right bait, right? We'll talk about that. We'll talk about using the correct equipment and, and actually uh, reeling the fish in, right? Those are uh, what we'll talk about. But this sermon is kind of an extra sermon. It really goes between the first step and the second step. And, and the Lord really kind of put this on my heart, and I, I believe it's a great need that we have, and, and it's, 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 it's rather, it's not complicated, but I believe, I believe we can sometimes miss it, right? So we're going back to this idea, when we think about us being fishers of men, right, us going fishing, right, we need to learn of Jesus, right, follow me, right, and I will make you fishers of men, and we also become like him, right? That, that's what we're called to do, we're called to become like Jesus, be images of Christ. And so I believe part of the problem with that, and, and really I believe really that we've not maybe fully understood what it means to be in Christ. We Maybe we've not fully understood the sanctification and our growth process. And I, and I believe um, that if we're going to be uh, effective witnesses, that we have to understand really what it means to follow Christ and to be like him, right, and to be images of him. That's what I'm going to talk about and focus on uh, today is really understanding the new nature that we have. And really, when it comes to being like Jesus, let me, let me put it like this, all the good qualities that are within us are of God, all right? And all the bad qualities are not of God, clearly, and so Jesus was a bold person. He was outgoing. He was, there was no fear in him. He, was, uh, he, he really just followed the Lord's will. He was submissive to the Holy Spirit. And, and I, I just believe that this understanding can be uh, better in our minds, right? But think about it from the perspective of we have to embrace this new identity that we're going to talk about. And we have to continue to grow and make a dedication to grow in our identity and challenge yourself to take action like Christ did. All right? So what must we know? When we talk, when we, when we talk about uh, really understanding our new identity, and, and if we're going to follow Christ, we have to understand what we're following and what he's making us into. Right? If we're going to understand that, what, 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 what do we have to know? Well, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is understanding the immediate change that took place at the point of salvation, right? Understanding our salvation, or you can call it our, our justification too, as well. You can call it our salvation, our justification, but understanding what happened to you at the point of salvation, right? Uh, we know this, that the Bible tells us that the old man is dead, right? We are crucified with Christ, that, that, that our sins were nailed to the cross, that, that we have been given new life. So my point is, is, is that, that we have been born again, we are a new creation, right? Before you were saved, um, sinners, are a key characteristic in, in a sinful fleshly nature is just caring about self. Right, it, it's they only care about self and my needs and, and 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 exploiting people and what do I need and and I don't want to love and care about others and have empathy, but 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 I, I'm here for me, right? That that is the flesh, right? Just being all about yourself, right? That is that is the flesh 101. And another thing 
that is uh, kind of consistent with that old nature in that old, that old man is kind of these other negative qualities that maybe we always often re- think about the same way, right? What, what, what do you mean? Well, uh, things like anxiety, right? Things like fear, things like stress, things that are really not supposed to be present in our new Christian walk, right? And we know that as we grow, we will become better, right? And we will, we will be more like Jesus. But understand this, is that there was no fear in Jesus Christ. There is no fear in the Holy Spirit. There is no stress in Jesus Christ. He, Jesus never stressed about it, right? He, he, he fully trusted in the Father. The only time we ever see Jesus kind of show any signs of this is when he was going to be separated from the Father. Why? Because it was against his very nature. It was against, against what he uh, wanted to do. He wanted uh, to not be separated from the Father. It, it is against who he was. And, and so understand this. Is there's nothing anxious about Jesus. That there was nothing uh, stress or fearful in, in Jesus Christ. And there are not to be those things in us. So as understanding the old you is dead, we become less of those things and we become more of Jesus Christ. So one, the first point that I'm making is, is understanding our salvation. The, the old you is dead. And because the old you is dead, you are now a new creature. right? You are now a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore... If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. What's my point? Is that those things are no longer your identity. You are a new creation. Your your, your identity is in Jesus Christ. So, and, and just to speak very practically, sometimes if we're not careful, we can actually talk like the old man, right? What, what do I mean? Well, sometimes we say things like, man, I, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm an angry person, I am, uh, I, I am just, I'm just a negative person, man, I, I'm a fearful person. And do you notice what you're doing in that speech? You're attaching your identity to those things. I am this, I am that. I am anxious, I am fearful, I am stressful. And the truth is, that is, that no, that is no longer your identity, right? Every time I hear somebody talk like that, I, I want to say, well, well, high stress, I'm Eduardo, nice to meet you. You, you. you know how we identify with our feelings. And that makes us act a certain way. Why? Because if you believe you're stressed, you're going to act a certain way. If you believe you're somebody who's filled with fear, you're going to act a certain way. And, and, and it will uh, control your life. You're not a fearful person. No, no, you are, you, you are made in the image of God, and now you have been saved. You have been given a new nature. And yes, you can still be, we can still be scared, and we can still be fearful, but we are no longer those things. That is sometimes that I, I, I believe we misunderstand about our sanctification is that those things are no longer our identity, right? We need to change our speech pattern. You say, I feel stress in this moment, but you are not a stressful person. I feel fearful at this point, but God has not given you the spirit of fear. I understand those things, that, that, that we have an identity is Christ, in Christ, and what it literally means to be Christian, a Christian is to be Christ-like. And Jesus was not like those things at all. And so, because of the new nature that we have, now we begin to show qualities of our Savior. What are some of those qualities? Well, I think about the fruit of the Spirit, right? Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. These are things that, because you're a believer, are now present in your life. Genuine love is not present in unbelievers, right? Uh, uh, genuine peace, right? The peace that passes all understanding. Th- these are now things that are present in your life because you are a believe- because you are a believer. And, and these things are in your new identity, not the old man, not anxiety, not fear. And so understand, understand this is that we have taken on the identity of Jesus Christ and we begin to take on the qualities of Jesus Christ. And we begin to put away, as we grow, we shouldn't move away from fear. Understand that. 
as we grow, we begin to move away from uh, stress and anxiety. Why? Because stress and anxiety are just, are just not having faith. Not just, just, just to put it plainly. And, and so understand that, that when we have taken the identity of Jesus Christ, we begin to be like him, and, now, and we begin to undergo the process of becoming more like him. Right? So this is now our identity. This is now what we do. And we are becoming more like him. All right? And so we are continually undergoing a change. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. For we are his workmanship. How does that mean? Well, very simply, right, if we think about it like, like we are the, God is the potter, right, and we are the clay. Before, when you were saved, you were something else, right? And it, I don't know if you guys have ever made something out of clay. I have some things from when I was a child, and uh, I, they're not very pretty. I don't know why my mom kept them around, around but w- when you're operating with, with clay, <laughs> When you're operating with clay, um, if you're building something and you decide that you don't no, no longer, before it hardens, right? If you decide that you no longer like that thing, you want to start over. What do you do? You smash it, right? You have to take apart the old form and start to build a, a, a new transfer, a, a new thing, whatever it is that you want to design, right? We have a new nature, and we have the ability to be transformed and genuine transformation, not just temporary change, genuine transformation from the inside out. And God, we are his workmanship. We are literally, he is literally making us into what he wants, into images of Jesus Christ. And so God is is, is going to, (laughs) in a sense, tear you down so he can rebuild you. Right, you are no. You will become. You will start to look less like your old self, right, and more like what God is making you. So God will continue to transform us, and understand this is. We must continue to grow, obviously, and continue to be. Uh, let <laughs> allow God to shape us and embrace your new identity. What do I mean by that? Well, let go of anxiety, right? Let go of fear and embrace, hold close to, uh, make it a part of who you are. W- 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 who are we? Well, well, God says that ye are a chosen generation, right? A, a royal priesthood. Ye are, the, ye are the salt of the earth, right? The light of the world. These things are your new identity, Right, the fruit of the Spirit, which is in you, love, joy, peace, right? All these things are your new identity. You need to embrace them. You need to hold them close. It is who you now are. Do we always walk in those things? Do we always behave uh, like we ought to know? But understand this is that you are the light of the world. We reflect the light of Jesus Christ. That is who we now are, right? And this isn't some short, sort of uh, just pep talk to make you feel better. This is biblical. This is who we are. We need to start acting like it. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth, right? Uh, we are a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood, First Peter talks about, right? We are a peculiar people. And, and so we must embrace these things, right? The, 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 the idea of embrace, if you're embracing something, it's like you're, hold, you're hugging it. You're holding it close. It's who we now are. No longer fearful. And so, and so understanding what God is transforming us into and understanding what our, our identity is and, and the goal post to get closer to, here are some truths about us. Are you ready? 2 Timothy 1.7 says that God has not given us a spirit of fear. Right? God has not given us the spirit of fear. And here, let, let me, I, but of love, Power and a sound mind. Thank you, brother. I didn't, I didn't have it in my notes. All right, God, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but, but love, power, and a sound, sound mind. That is what God has given us. What, what else has God has give, given us? God has given us the Holy Spirit. 
right? And the Holy Spirit, we have no less of the Holy Spirit than the apostles did, right? Understand that. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the, of the Trinity, lives in us and is, tr and is helping to guide us and to shape us, to convict us, and is helping to transform us. And, he, and, and our new identity is in Him. <laughs> and so, uh, what is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is outgoing. The Holy Spirit is bold. The Holy Spirit it, it will, will command you to do things that hey, you may not be comfortable of doing. And, and you know what the Holy Spirit is? The, the Holy Spirit is not an introvert. The Holy Spirit is an extrovert. You know, biblically, you are not an introvert. Nobody, no Christian is an introvert. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is bold. It's not fearful. The Holy Spirit is it, it, just, it, it, he lives within you. I mean, none of us are an introvert. No, no, that might have been who we were before we were saved, but that is no longer right identity, and our identity is who the Holy Spirit of God is making us to be. You know, you know what the Holy Spirit did? The Holy Spirit uh, told uh, I forget his name, the, uh, who, who was led out of the water and uh, uh, baptized the guy. <laughs> Somebody help me. Yes, the Ethiopian eunuch. That was, he didn't have a name. <laughs> the, Holy Spirit, the, 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 the Holy Spirit told the Ethiopian eunuch to just go. Hey, there's a man who needs Jesus Christ. Go talk to him. The Holy Spirit command, told Peter, hey, hey, go preach in the day of Pentecost. Right, there's all these people that need to hear about Jesus. They think that you're drunk. They think that uh, you're, you're speaking in tongues. They think that you're drunk. Hey, go, go preach to them. Right, the Holy Spirit of God uh, just, just, just told all these brave men, told, uh, uh, encouraged and empowered, right? What, what did Jesus say in the day uh, before he ascended? That we shall receive power, he told the disciples. You shall receive power, right? After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. This is who the Holy Spirit are. This is who, uh, who we are. I want us to understand our identity. Is that here's the truth. If, if we're going to be effective witnesses, we have to embrace our new identity. We have to embrace the fact that we are now extroverts. We are now outgoing. Right? We, are not, we, are not, we are no longer fearful. We are no longer shy. This is not who we are anymore. We may behave like these things, but this is not who you are anymore. The Holy Spirit of God tells you, hey, go outside. Or when you go outside, talk to these people. Don't condemn them. They need Jesus Christ. That is the Holy Spirit. And hey, and here's the truth is that we have to be outgoing if we're going to share the gospel. The Holy Spirit is bold, not fearful. God has not given you the spirit of fear. This is who we are. So what do we do? So because of Jesus Christ, because we are in Christ, we need to stop believing these lies and, frankly, the lies that we tell ourselves and understand our sanctification and that, hey, we are no longer these things. Stop letting society tell you who you are. Stop, let, stop letting society tell you who you are. Hey, stop, don't, don't believe in, you know, introvert, extrovert. Don't believe in zodiac signs. No, those things are, are not true. Why? Because our new identity is in Jesus Christ. He tells us who we are, and he gives us a new purpose and a new identity, and he empowers us with the Holy Spirit of God who guides us into all truth. And so Romans 12, 2, talking about us being renewed, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing of your mind. This is also part of our sanctification. Is that, hey, the world teaches you something, and because of your sin's nature, you believe something, but your mind is being made new, right? Renewed. It's being made new. By, by, by understanding the truths in Scripture and believing them, it will change your actions, and it will help you in your sanctification. So as we grow, we start to believe and hold on to the truth of the Bible, and they are meant to help us in our lives. But if you continue to believe the truths of the, of the world out there, those things will still keep you in a sort of bondage. But as we grow, our mind is renewed. Our mind is continuing to be renewed. 
we accept, we receive the truths of Scripture, and the Scripture is what, is what changes us, is, is what helps transform us, is what convicts us and convinces us that, hey, we were wrong, and now we have to change our ways. Part of our sanctification is understanding the truths of Scripture, understanding who God is, understanding who we are, who understanding who we are without Him, and understand our new identity, and understand the goalposts that the Jesus Christ, and understand that we are called to be like Him. We are called to be images of Him. And so I want us to understand that we say it a lot. We are, we are called to be images of Christ. Um, I don't know if you've ever, um, if you've ever taken like a sort of... Um, not a drawing class, but you ever see you ever use one of those notebooks or, or something that where you um where it has a sketch, right? And it gives you steps as to how to sketch that thing, right? And it says you know first do this or first do this, and they're typically easier things. Um, and and whenever I've tried to copy a sketch, you know when I was a kid and I would draw, I like the one where you just trace it, you know, where you put the paper on the thing and you trace the figure. And it's a lot easier. My drawings look a lot better that way. All right, I don't have a lot of artistic ability. But if you've ever found yourself using one of those drawings and you sketch that drawing and you hold your drawing and you hold what the picture is, and I don't know about you, but me, it never really looked like a picture. <laughs> it never really looked like the picture. The goal is, right, if your goal is to draw that, object or that thing or that person, whatever it is, is to get as close to that thing as you possibly can, right? That is the goal if you're drawing something, right? Uh, if, you're, if you're getting a portrait of you, you know, done, the goal of the artist is to draw accurately, right? Are you with me? That's the goal of the artist. That is the goal of the person drawing. You know, not the goal, the goal is not, oh wait, the nose is weird, the eyes are weird, the body's weird, but it kind of looks like it. You know, it's, it's, good, it's good enough, right? It's close enough. You know, I, I'm, I'm fearful that we sometimes take that approach with our Christian lives. Where we see the images of Christ, where we see where we are right now, and we say, well, that's good enough, right? It's not what we're called to be. We're not called to be good enough. We're called to to not conform to this world, but to be transformed, right? And, and to be, become followers of Jesus Christ. That's so when Jesus said, follow me, he told the disciples, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They needed to learn from Jesus. They needed to watch how he works, right? That is discipleship. They needed to copy him and be like him so that they can become fishers of men, right? You can't really have one without the other. My point is, is that we ought to never be too, uh, we ought to never be too uh, comfortable in our Christian lives and not look at the image of Christ and look at where we are right now and say, well, that's good enough, right? right? I can't be the same five-year-old kid that saw a picture. I mean, I don't think I ever said it was good enough. I probably always said that that does not look like it, but we can never look at those two things and say, hey, that's good enough. Why? Because we are still called to grow in grace. We're still, still called to grow in Him. So based on this truth, based on the fact that the old you is dead, based on the fact that we are a new creation, based on the fact that we are called to take our identity, we are tar- called to take on the identity of that He is our identity, the fact that God is making us more like Him, the fact that our minds need to be changed. What do we need to do? We need to take steps to do that. God will continue to do the good work in you. He will continue to transform you. But hey, we need to continue to take steps to do those things. We need to continue to grow like Him, to, to, to be like Him. And we need to continue to challenge ourselves to transform us and to, and to really learn and commit ourselves to the Scripture, to change our understanding, and, and to change our belief system that will change our lives or change our actions. You are not those things that we often identify with. Hey, I am not, you know, you say, man, I'm just stressed. I, I'm not stressed. I feel stressed, right? The Holy Spirit is not stressed. Understand those things. Keep those things in mind. You are now a new creation. 
and we're going to have to part two this. But what we're going to talk about next week is how do we challenge ourselves to be transformed, right? How do we challenge ourselves to continue to grow? How, what, 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 what can we practically see and do from the scriptures to be transformed? And, and let me just give you a little hint. We have to work out our own salvation. And we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, coming here next week, but I don't want to. I don't want to go too quick on that. I want to really dive into that as as we're right. understanding this truth, understanding where we are, understanding who we are, and what God is doing in us. How do we get to the goalpost? How do we get to Jesus Christ? That's what we'll uh, uh, keep going with next week. Let's close in prayer, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for this uh, day that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for this. Uh, amazing truths of Scripture, Lord, and help these help to keep these fresh in our minds, Lord. Help to just uh, just continue to to grow and to <clears throat> submit to you and to just to, Lord, continue to change us, continue to transform us, Lord. We desire to be effective in our witness, and and Father, we need to acknowledge who Jesus Christ is making us who he's transforming us to be and, and the truths about our old self and our new self. And, and Lord, help us in, in our sanctification. Lord, help us in our commitment. Lord, I, I pray that you help us to be bold, to be courageous, to not be fearful. Lord, just to be submit to the Holy Spirit of God. Father, we love you. Thank you for all you do. Lord, continue to keep us safe and Lord, continue to guide us every step of the way. Father, we love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name.